During my C++ Minecraft series, I've been playing around with cube voxel generation, but today I want to explore another method of rendering voxels, marching cubes. What is marching cubes exactly? This is a voxel. It's represented by a ball. Right now it's red, so it's inactive. If it is active, it is green. You're probably used to a cube voxel generation such as Minecraft clones. Here, a cube is generated around a voxel if the voxel is active. Marching cubes generate triangles between voxels and generates different shapes depending on which voxels are active around it. Marching cubes allow for smoother terrain to be generated while still using voxels, and it's used in games such as Astroneer and Seven Days to Die. Let's go make it. Also, yes, I'm using Unity, not C++, but this video is about algorithms, so there's really no difference in difficulty between the two. Unity just allows me to do it much faster and make it look better. Let's get a small refresher on how voxel cubes are generated. We leap through an array of voxels. For each voxel, we first check if it is active. If it is, we start generating the faces of the cube around the voxel. For each face, we check if the voxel surrounding that face is active or inactive, and only generate it if it's inactive. This way, we're not generating any faces that aren't visible. For this demonstration, I'm making sure to generate faces on the edge of the chunk so that it looks like a complete cube. Also, my favorite C Sharp feature is local methods. It makes a code so much cleaner. For basic marching cube generation, we loop through the voxels like before, but instead of generating faces, we use a lookup table to get all the triangles that need to be generated. For each voxel, we get a lookup value based on which voxels are active around the point we're generating. We use bitwise operations to get this lookup value, with each bit corresponding to one voxel. All the information we need is available from these massive lookup tables. There are 256 combination of voxels, so there are 256 entries in this table, and no, I did not make this myself. We use the lookup value to get the triangles we need to generate. We loop through these triangles and get a series of edges. These edges are formed by two corners, and we get the midpoint of the corners to get the final positions of the vertices. We then add the indices to finish the triangle. The reason we do it this way is so that we can add something called interpolation, which will make the terrain smoother, but we'll get to that later in the video. After that, we simply create the mesh and attach it to the game object so Unity can render it. And that's it. We don't need to check for other voxels before generating triangles because the lookup table is already optimized to only generate visible triangles. However, right now it looks pretty much the same as with cubes, just with inclines and smoother corners instead of 90 degree angles. I'm going to fix this in a bit, but first, I know that me using Unity might disappoint some of you, so I want to make it up to you by giving myself a bit of a challenge. I'm going to use compute shaders to generate the meshes. Compute shaders allow you to run large amounts of calculations on the GPU. Since the GPU is optimized for speed using many threads, it is much faster than this. CPU. It has many limitations, but it's perfect for something like this. I've never made a compute shader before, so I made this simple one which just generates a gradient texture. I then created this script to run the compute shader and render the result texture. Here you can see the result, but it's pretty boring. I made it a bit more interesting by adding a time property to it. Now it should move and repeat the pattern over time. I set this time property from the demo script to make it work. Now it moves. It's still boring, but it's good practice. I did make some pretty weird stuff with this on a live stream. A week from today, I'm going. <laughs> a week from today, I'm going to release a bit. <laughs> I don't know why I can't say this part without laughing. <laughs> a week from today, I'm going to release a bonus video about that, which is already available for Patreon and YouTube members. It's pretty funny, so check it out. Now that I have some practice with compute shaders, it's time to use it for our marching cubes. I created this compute shader to test out making triangles. It simply creates three vertices and adds them to an append structured buffer. I then have this mess to send data, run the compute shader, get the vertices, and create a mesh. It didn't work very well. We have this weird mess of incohesive triangles. This is happening because we are assuming all the triangles are being added in the right order when they are not. I fixed this by creating a triangle struct that contains three float threes. I changed the mesh generation a bit to account for this triangle struct. It now works as expected. We're not creating triangles from a compute shader. All that's left to do is put it in our marching cubes algorithm. Well, that didn't work. That's closer, I guess. Well, we just went backward. There we go, it's working, but there's one problem. When turning the resolution up or the points per meter up, it just increases the size instead of the resolution. But this is an easy fix as well. Now let's look at the code. I'm including an HLSL version of the lookup tables we used earlier. I also have the triangle struct. We get the voxels, the voxel count, and the voxel size from the C sharp code, and use the vertex buffer as output. I also have this get index function in an interp function. Get index calculates the index of the voxel we're working with, while interp gets a position between two float three points. Here's the actual logic. It's the same as the C-sharp code, just in HLSL. We calculate the lookup value, get the edges, and create triangles using these edges. This is the code that runs the compute shader and gets the triangle data. It's pretty much just setting variables in the shader and then running it. Then, just like before, we use these triangles to create a mesh. 
Now let's work on making this smoother using interpolation. First, we change the interp function to smoothly interpolate between two vertices using noise values. This also requires us to change our voxels from integers to floats. We also add a noise threshold variable. We use this noise threshold variable when getting the lookup value, and we pass the noise value into the interp function to get our smooth interpolation. I changed the noise generation logic to allow for decimals. Finally, we can simply pass our voxel floats into our compute shader to get the values. This was my first attempt. I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but that's definitely not right. Here's a working result. I think it looks quite good, so let's start using this to generate actual Terrain. My demo script was intentionally unoptimized because it was made to be very flexible, so let's make a proper chunk component. I have a more organized set of parameters, including noise parameters. I'm also attaching the mesh filter to the chunk itself instead of making it a child object. The generation method is just about the same as before, so I won't go through the whole thing. The only two changes I made were adding some new parameters to the compute shader and using this component's mesh filter instead of creating a child object. Now onto the compute shader. I organized the input and output variables a little better. I'm now doing noise calculations in the compute shader, so I added noise parameters as well as a chunk pause variable to make noise calculations dependent on where the chunk is in the world. This is my noise.hlsl file, which contains some noise functions that I got off the internet somewhere. I don't actually remember where. This is my get noise function from the compute shader. I'm getting the voxel positions based on the voxel position and voxel size. I'm then getting the noise value and then running some calculations based on the noise parameters to get the final value. The first thing I do when I generate the triangles is get the noise values at each of the 8 corners. The lookup value calculation is the same as before but with this noise value list. Then I get the actual triangles the same way as before but now it's a little more condensed. Here you can see it working with a chunk size of 64 and a voxel count of 64. However, there are gaps here. This is because generating our matching cubes in between voxels leads to the actual size being one less than the chunk size. So I decreased the position of each of the voxels by one so that each chunk was 63 meters away from the center, and this works if the voxel count is the same. However, I do want to add a level of detail eventually, and you can see that if I decrease the voxel count in the surrounding chunks, the gaps return. The fix is to calculate the voxel size based on voxel count minus one. Now there are no gaps with the chunk size of 64 and with all the chunks being 64 meters across. It also stays consistent with different chunk sizes. After that I added octaves to my noise calculations making the terrain look much better than it did before. I guess I need to create the actual world, but first I made the terrain green instead of brown. More accurately, I created a shader that blends between a grass color and dirt or rock color depending on how steep the terrain is. I also added a snow color that starts blending into the terrain color at a specified height. I can adjust the start and end points of the grass blending as you can see here. I can also adjust the start and end points of the snow blending. I think this makes the terrain look much more interesting. I'll keep expanding upon this as we move forward with the project, but I think it's looking pretty good for now. Now with octaves and a terrain shader, we can make some pretty cool looking terrain. Here are a few examples. I was going to use multi-threading for chunk generation, but it turns out you can only run compute shaders from the main thread in Unity, so I guess it's all happening on the main thread. I created a world class which contains the size of the chunk, the number of voxels in a chunk, the render distance, and the player object. I also keep a dictionary of all the chunks in a chunk queue. On update, I first check to make sure no chunk is currently generating, since this isn't multi-threaded. I then get the ID of the chunk the player is currently in. I use this to check if the player moved to a different chunk. If he has, I clear the current chunk queue and delete any chunks that are out of range. After that, I have this massive chunk of code which fills the queue in a circular pattern around the player. After all that, I generate the next chunk from the queue. All of the generation logic is in the chunk script, so this generate chunk from queue method just sends all the right properties to the chunk and then calls its generate method. I also made this player script. Most of the code was from Brackies. And with that, we now have infinite world generation. The chunk size is only 16 by 16 with a height of 256 because that's the highest I could go while maintaining good performance since generation needs to happen on the main thread, but it works. And that's marching cube terrain generation. That's all I have for this video. I want to play around more with noise and add a level of detail, so if you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments below. Also, if this video gets 3000 likes, I'll remake this project in C++, so leave a like if you like this video. This project is up on my Patreon for Silver Plus members. 
Thank you to my YouTube members, Ulyss, Jen, Zyro, and Miyaki. And to my Patreon supporters, Dennis Fetchner and FlexHD. I'm sorry I've been gone for so long. I've started to focus more on the quality of my projects and videos rather than on keeping an upload schedule, so I probably won't have a consistent schedule going forward. Let me know what you want to see next, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.